Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, and we are reading Psalms 107. All right. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. See, we're not supposed to live in the wilderness. We're supposed to go through the wilderness. Okay, that the wilderness is a means to an end. It is not the end. So for the, those of you who think you're in the wilderness to stay, no, you're not. You're going through and you'll come out on the other end. Verse five, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right hand, that they might go to a city of habitation. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Such as sit in darkness in the, in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands asunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. We're going to stop there. One of the things we forget is that the life we live on this planet is full of hills, valleys, mountains, dead ends, U-turns, pitfalls, sinkholes, detours, delays. It's full of stuff. It's just full of stuff. And the thing we have to remember is there is a climb as we move further and further into the things of God. We are moving upward. It's much harder. It takes way more effort to move up than it does to slide down or slide backwards, which for some would be backsliding. Some of you have seen Michael Jackson do the moonwalk. You know how he <clears throat> is able to do that moonwalk and his feet look like they're moving forward, right? But what is he doing? He's steadily sliding backwards. Well, that's what some of us do in our lives. We feel like we're moving forward. We're putting one foot in front of the other. But for some reason, it looks like we're losing ground rather than gaining. Don't lose heart when you lose ground. Sometimes losing ground is part of your education. You know, the school of hard knocks. Some of us have to go through that to get it, to really get what God's trying to show us. Some of us have to fall flat on our faces. It's not a point of humiliation. It's not to, to shame us. No, there's no shame in God's game. No. The point is to teach us, to open our eyes. And as long as we're going through life, we have to learn that we have fallacies. We have weaknesses. We will never reach perfection, but we are to always strive for perfection. Step by step. <clears throat> so be encouraged when you feel like life is taking ground away from you. Be encouraged because no matter what, as long as you're in Jesus Christ, as long as you're striving, you're pressing toward that mark of the prize of the high calling of God, as long as you're pressing in and pressing forward, even if you fall flat on your face and totally screw up on the way, God is right there to lift you up back on your feet. 
peace. And when you get back up, guess what? You're going to realize that all that ground you thought you lost, you've actually gained. Because when God stands you back up, he's going to move you forward. Because you will have gained more understanding and more insight. So we're not going to get real deep into psychological stuff. But the point is, be encouraged no matter where your life is at this point. As long as you are in Christ you are in a shelter. You are in a refuge. You're in a safe haven. You may skin your knee. You may bruise your elbow. You may even get a black eye, but nothing will by any means harm you. Nothing can take your salvation away. Only you can cancel that. So whatever you do, number one, don't give up. Don't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Number two, keep pressing forward. God has promises for you. He knows the plans he has for you. No matter what happens in this country or the other country or with the economical system or the financial crisis or rumors of war, no matter what goes on, no matter what happens during the famine, God will always have a Goshen for you, baby. Mm -hmm. Some of you are scratching your head. What's a Goshen? A Goshen is where Joseph's family was told to abide and to get the best of the land. And when he got the best of the land, his family ate well. They had all the bread they needed. They had all the food they needed. Right smack dab in the middle of the famine. So don't lose heart because of what you hear on the news. Don't lose heart because of what's going on in the financial system. Don't lose heart because the government is not your supply. That's not your source. Are you in Christ Jesus? Well, quit looking at the president for your source. If you want the government to release funds, you tell God. You talk to God about that. All the letters in the world ain't going to make it happen. But God can make it happen by just a thought in his mind. God is the one you go to. Whatever you're looking for, whatever help you're looking for, cry out to God. That's where the help will come from. You heard Pat's testimony. Well, some of you didn't, but Pat shared a testimony about how she was at the grocery store after giving somebody a, a, a blessing. And at the grocery store, somebody walked up and swiped their card after she had her groceries up on the conveyor belt. And the woman said, oh, no, I'm paying for your groceries. See, this is what I'm trying to share with you. When we walk in the supernatural and we live a life pursuing holiness and we depend on the power of the Holy Ghost. We lean on God's mercies. We fall at the mercy of the court, so to speak. We cry out to God for provision. We're trusting him, not them. We're trusting him, not him. I mean, trusting God, not the devil. We're not trusting in our fears. We're not full of anxiety. We're not shaking at every bad news that comes across the airwaves. We're trusting in God. Why? Because we are in his word, feeding ourselves by God's spirit. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You're worried about the food shortage, aren't you? Well, do you know that you could ask God, Lord, as long as I don't have food in my cabinet and food in my refrigerator until you bring food, would you kill my hunger pains? I'll read more of your word. You remove all my hunger and nourish my body with all the nutrients it needs. What? by every word that comes out of your mouth that I read from your Bible. Would you sustain me through your word? If there's no water, would you sustain my bodily fluids through your word? You see, God is able 
to bring water out of a rock. So he will sustain you through his word and or he will sustain you miraculously with water when there is no water service, when the waters are shut off and you can't, the faucet doesn't yield any water. You go in your refrigerator, you put those bottles in the fridge and ask the Lord, turn your fridge on and fill those bottles up with water. So you have to learn to believe in the miracles. How do you know about the miracles? Guess what? You got to get in his word, y'all. Read the book of Deuteronomy and you will see all the areas, the book of Exodus. You will see all the areas where God provided for his people in the wilderness. And what does he say about the wilderness? For those that are God's enemies, he will turn a pleasant land into a wilderness. He will turn a spring into rocks and sand. But for his people crying out to him, depending on him, trusting in him, he will turn a rock into a fountain of water. He will turn a dry uh, land, a dry plain into a river flowing with living water. He will turn rocks into vegetation. He will feed his people. There's a song that says, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and gather the young lambs in his bosom. You have to lean back and relax. Kick your feet up. Kick your feet up. Say, Lord, I'm going to depend on you. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fear. I know if I need to do something, you tell me. Just like he told Joseph and Mary to get up out that bed and move because Pharaoh was out trying to kill all the babies. You warn us, Lord. Warn me. Don't let me be caught in the dark. If I'm not getting the news on TV, on YouTube, on the phone, elsewhere, please make sure I get the memo. Please make sure I don't miss out. Don't let me get blindsided by the enemy in any way, shape, or form. God will warn you. I remember, let me share this with you real quick so you kind of see how practical, practical God is. In the supernatural, God is practical. I remember my car was messing up one time, and this was the Buick Roadmaster years ago. And I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I said, Lord, what's wrong with my car? Plain as day. I didn't know what the heck it was, but I heard serpentine belt. Serpentine belt? The mechanic checked it out. He happened to be a husband of one of my hair customers. He checked it out. He said, you've got a serpentine belt that needs to be replaced. Serpentine belt? How much? $400. Oh, oh, $400. I don't have it. Lord, what do I do? Lord, please do something. I need to get this thing fixed. What does the Lord do? I go to the salon with one customer. One customer ain't going to pay for that serpentine bill. While I'm doing that customer, another customer calls up. Can you do my hair today? I know it's last minute. Sure. The next one calls up. Can you do my hair today? I know it's last minute. Sure. And I, I set them a time. And guess what? By the end of that day, I had made $407. So when the man finished working on the car, thinking it was going to sit there for days before I was able to get it, I was he called me and said, your car is fixed. And I was able to say, you can bring it. I got the money. I didn't miss a beat. Why? God, living in the supernatural, seeing how practical God is. One time I, I messed up my car. I was driving through the rain, didn't know what happened. It's riding all rough. I couldn't figure out, you know, where did that come from? I parked the car. Lord, what's wrong with my car? Catalytic converter. I don't know a catalytic converter from a spark plug. Guess what? When I described the problem, to a mechanic over the phone, what did he say? Catalytic converter. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I couldn't afford to get it fixed, so the Lord let me know I could sell it. And he'll replace it down the road one day. Guess what? I'm driving a 2003 Lincoln Town Car. But it's not that one. The Lord sent the person to buy it. He bought it. He went down the road. He enjoyed it. Got it fixed. Everything was fine. I sold it to him at a low price because I knew how much it was going to cost to get it fixed. And the Lord blessed me with a car practically zip. I didn't have to pay anything. But, you know, God is so, oh, my goodness. I wish you could see what it's like living. When you're living for God, there are benefits. There's a, a, a Psalms, this, I think it's Psalms 101, I'm not sure. Uh, or 10, anyway, 101, 103, one of those. And it says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. And it goes on and on and on. Listen, you have to understand, there are fringe benefits for living for God. Yeah, you got to go through the wilderness first. That's usually the first part of your life. First part of your walk with the Lord is the dry, the doldrums, the empty, the questions, 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 frustrations, frustrations, persecution, persecution. You're wondering what in the heck is all this about, Alfie. But guess what? God begins to explain. As you follow on to know, you will know. As you follow on to know. You can't sit down on your behind in the cement, legs far apart, crying and wallowing in self-pity. You can't handle it that way. You got to keep climbing through the tears, climbing through the hurts, climbing through the depression, climbing through the fears, climbing through the doubts, climbing through the questions, climbing through the quandaries, climbing through discouragement, but you keep climbing. That's the point. You keep climbing because what does God's word say? <clears throat> if you diligently seek him with all your heart, you will find him. That, that's hard when you haven't experienced him yet. I know, I get that. But all I can ask you to do is don't stop in your pursuit. Don't come shy. Oh, thank you, Lord. I forgot about that. Years ago, listen to this, y'all, because some of you, you're right on the precipice of experiencing God in a way you've never experienced him before. And the miracles are about to start breaking forth. Listen, listen, listen. Don't, don't let me forget about the popcorn, Lord. Okay. This man, this is back in the old Western days. This man had bought a plot of land, a couple of hundred bucks. And he was out there digging for gold. He knew there was a gold vein, but he couldn't find it. He dug here, he dug there, dug here, dug there, dug there, dug there. Months and months he kept digging. And he got so discouraged, he just said, forget it. I'm going to sell this land and move on. So he sells the land. Somebody else comes and buys it. And they asked him, where did you dig? And he showed them all the areas. And they said, okay. So he goes on down the road somewhere. And the man that bought the property went over one foot, 12 inches, y'all, 12 inches, and dug. Guess what? There was the vein of gold. That man was rich beyond, beyond compare. He was rich. He found the gold, the gold vein. All throughout his land, he was able to follow it. Oh, that man, he, he raked in the almighty dollar because he kept looking. He kept digging. Where the other one gave up, someone else came and cashed in. Mm -hmm. So don't give up. When you pop popcorn, thank you, Lord. When you pop popcorn, when you hear that first popcorn pop, 
Do you turn the fire off and say, oh, I ain't going to get the that popcorn ain't going to cook because you only heard one pop? Sometimes it takes several seconds before the next kernel pops, doesn't it? And then fewer seconds for the next two or three kernels to pop. So you might hear, boop, and then boop, 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 and next thing you know, you got, they're just going crazy. And the whole thing is filling up with popcorn. Well, guess what? The same way that that's going to happen in judgment when a lot of things go down, a lot of things go bad, is the same way some of your blessings are going to come. You're going to get one blessing that's going to shock you. Another blessing is going to surprise you. Another blessing is going to get your attention. Whoa, that happened for me. And before you know it, you got blessing over here and blessing over there happening at one time. Then blessing, 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 blessing. Boom, 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 boom. And you're overwhelmed thinking, oh my God, why is God doing this for me? I don't deserve all this. Well, guess what? We don't deserve any of it. That's the benefit of walking with the Lord. Know that God is for you, not against you. For I know the plans I have for you. And I know just what you're going through. Remember that. God knows. And he's got his plans for you. <laughs> when you can't see what tomorrow holds and yesterday is through, remember, I know the plans I have for you. To give you hope for tomorrow, joy for your sorrow, strength in everything you go through. Remember, I know the plans I have for you. So no matter what's going on in this day and age, know that God has got your back. God has got your future. God has got your destiny. God is preparing the way ahead of you. He's smoothing out the rough places and making the crooked places straight. He knows how to set you up and how to fulfill every plan he's got for your life. Cooperate with him at every turn, every turn now. Even the little things you don't think don't count. Those little negative thoughts that pop in your head, bat them away. Don't even entertain them. Whether it's a nasty feeling about somebody that gets on your nerves or a, a thought of judgmental, like they ain't about nothing. No, no, no. Keep all that negativity away from you. Mortify the deeds of the flesh as much as you can. Pray for the help to do the stuff you can't do. And I'm telling you, God rewards obedience. Do everything you can to obey at every given turn, every given moment, every given thought, feeling, and word. Obey. Every given act. Obey. And you will begin to see floods. You know how the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard? Oh, you're going to see his standard. You're going to be shocked and how God comes to your rescue. You're going to start being surprised at how God wants to bless you. He's got blessings in store. All those things you've done in the past that nobody knows about, God will reward you openly. Walk in that supernatural, y'all. It's your inheritance. Enjoy it while you can. Amen? Amen. God bless you. And that is the word for today.